What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Unthar Game Channel. I am AJ Gels. Guys, it's time for another uh, weekly episode of uh, my weekly show. Again, I need a catchy name or something for this shit. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, but for those of you who are new to this program, show, whatever the hell you want to call it, uh, basically what I do, uh, I, gain, I gather news uh, from pretty much gaming news outlets, you know, be it Polygon, uh, Destructoid, I, you know, I actually used Destruct an article from Destructed this week, <clears throat> uh, IGN, GameSpot, Game Informer, you know, all that stuff. And, uh, basically what I do is I, you know, I take these news stories, uh, the ones that I find interesting, um, you know, I screenshot, <clears throat> save for, I'm sorry, <clears throat> sorry, my, <clears throat> okay, I don't know what the hell's going on with my voice right now, <laughs> but I, I, but I take these, uh, news stories, kind of gather them up in some notes, and uh, I bring them to you guys, you know, I uh, kind of talk about the article, if I have any sort of analysis or opinions on it, I give those that analysis and opinion <clears throat> um, after that, so that's kind of the format of this show. Uh, this week's is pretty short compared to normal, I think I'll have about a page, yeah, page and a half of notes, usually I have around two and a half pages, um, so this week, yeah, you know, should I uh, kind of fly by, um, I'm like... I guess most weeks, uh, uh, but I do say, uh, join the 11th hour game com uh, community, or, uh, well, I'll say community, it's because what I'm trying to build, but, uh, by going to the comments, uh, by start, you know, start a conversation with somebody, uh, start a conversation with me, always happy to talk with you guys, uh, other than that, if I miss something, uh, you know, if I, if I missed a piece of news, which very likely could happen, uh, please, uh, post a link uh, to an article uh, in the comments or, uh, you know, summarize an article where you got it, all that stuff, um, and kind of keep trying to help inform and, I guess, kind of talk about games in general. Uh, anything else? Other than that, guys, uh, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, or my website down in the description below, and like, comment, subscribe, as always. First article, we <laughs> got just jump right into it. Uh, no Man's Sky servers will be wiped this Sunday, according to a tweet by Henry Denhelm, senior programmer at Hello Games. <clears throat> now, if you're wondering why the hell is uh, the, are the, do the servers need to be wiped, uh, this is basically so that anyone who, with an, who got an early copy, so, you know, uh, any of the media, um, those kind of people, or that guy who spent uh, $1,300 on eBay to get a free game, uh, or get to get an early copy of the game. I'm not sure if I talked about that. I think that I think that happened in the week that I lost all my notes. Uh, that was two weeks ago. Um, but so basically, it's so once the game releases on the ninth, uh, we'll all be on the same kind of playing field. You know, it'll be uh, you know everybody squared. Um, all that. Uh, article by uh, Simon Sarkar of Polygon. But, you know, uh, reading into this, yeah, I, I do want to talk a little bit more about um, No Man's Sky, mostly because I will be playing that here on the channel. Uh, August 9th, I said that earlier. Uh, but, you know, I'll be playing that on the channel. You know, I'll play it for probably a couple weeks on, you know, on camera. Um, I'm not really... Just because, like, this is a weird game because, to me, it seems kind of like rust in space. Because it's, the, it, I, as far as I know, there's no real narrative or story to it. It's about, you know, building and exploring planets. So, I mean, it, it's a really interesting game. Uh, and, I kind of, and, it's, and, you know, it's, it's kind of cool to play these different kind of experiences uh, on the channel with you guys. Um, but, you know, that's kind of the idea. You know, it's going to be one of those, it's one of those procedurally generated-esque um, games that it's really weird how this is going to work because it's as you discover planets, you know, you name species of animals that live on it and name planets. Once you you know go online, that these planets kind of go into other people can visit these planets that you've seen. So it kind of, so you're kind of mapping out this universe together with everybody else online. It's a, it's an interesting idea that I really, I don't think, I, again, I've seen, this reminds me of another game, um, that I just, I can't remember the name of, uh, somebody told me about it a long time ago, it, the, the concept was, it's like, you start as like a, like a young, like a little, some sort of being, you know, um, you know, some sort of creature, and then, you know, as you keep playing the game, you keep exploring, you know, you keep getting bigger and bigger, and eventually you get space travel, and you find other planets, it, it sounded like a good game. 
Um, and it sounds like that kind of maybe inspired this. I don't know. I don't know anybody at Hello Games, so. But uh, like I said, you can check out uh, some gameplay of that um, August 9th here on the channel. Uh, Final Fantasy XV will be getting a season pass. Uh, this was originally reported by uh, Gematsu uh, in Japan. It says that the uh, season pass will include Booster Pack DLC number one, Episode Gladiolus. I hope that I'm pronouncing that right. DLC number two, Holiday Pack uh, number three, uh, Episode Ignis DLC number four, Episode Prompto uh, number five, and Expansion Pack DLC number six. So, you know, those six things will be included. So I'm assuming it's pretty much all the DLC will be, like usual, will be <laughs> uh, available uh, with the purchase of the Season Pass. Uh, the article is, does say that this is the Japanese version. So I don't think the content will be different. I mean, it, you know, I mean, it, it kind of prefaced that saying that the Japanese version will include, and then it listed the DLCs. Um... So again, from what I what I read into this is it's going to be the same thing, but this is confirmed for Japan. Hence, why um, the only official price um, I have for you is uh, two thousand seven hundred yen. Uh, that'll be about thirty dollars uh, American. Um, so you know, I, again, I don't have the official uh, non yen pricing or Western um, pricing, but, uh, the season pass is included, uh, in the digital deluxe version of the game, uh, for $85. Article by Wesley Copeland of IGN. Ah, <sighs> it seems like I can't go a week of this show without talking about somebody filing a lawsuit against somebody else. A New Jersey man <laughs> has filed a lawsuit against Nintendo, Pokemon Company, and, um... I think I've been pronouncing this wrong. I believe it's Niantic Labs. I've been pronouncing Niantic. I'm not. I'm not. Not 100 sure. Uh, but you know the creators of Pokemon Go. Yeah. Uh, apparently, uh, Pokemon were appearing in this guy's backyard, and people were trespassing on his property. Now uh, I'm going to read a part from that. You know, straight from the lawsuit. Uh, and I quote, at least five individuals knocked on plaintiff's door and asked for access to the plaintiff's backyard in order to catch, it actually uses quotes, Pokemon uh, that the game had placed in plaintiff's residence in West Orange, New Jersey, without plaintiff's permission, end quote. Um, he kind of points out that he's not the only one kind of having problems with this. Uh, you know, I mean, I remember talking a couple weeks ago. Uh, the Holocaust Museum in uh, D.C. is having problems with people going in there to play Pokemon Go. Um, there have been other people that, you know, uh, uh, <clears throat> I did another story, again, I think that same week, uh, about a guy whose house used to be a church and was kind of labeled as a, um, what's the word, um, Poke Gym or Pokemon Gym. Jeez, I played this game. I don't know why I'm having trouble picking out the terminology. Um, his house was labeled a gym, so people were going out there, you know, but he kind of liked, it. in that case, he liked it, because, you know, he played the game, he said if they wanted to move it, move it not far away, <laughs> um, but no, I mean, this is, I guess, an interesting lawsuit, seeing that, yes, people are trespassing on this guy's property, uh, and yes, you know, I mean, again, these other places are having problems with trespassing and this, that, and the other thing, um, but again, I, I think this is a... I, I don't think they're suing the right people. Because there's... Why, cause I don't know why they're suing Nintendo in all this. Uh, mostly because... I, I mean, I understand what, what, what they're getting at. Because yes, Pokemon are appearing on their property without their, I guess, approval or say-so. But... Uh, I... I I, re I really don't know how to re kind of put this into words. It's, yes, these people wouldn't have trespassed if the Pokemon wasn't there, but the responsibility to not trespass should be on the individual, not the companies. So this is where I say, yeah, they are technically responsible for why these people trespassed, but I think the people who committed the act of trespassing 
you know, file the charges, what, you know, I'm not 100% sure if that's a, I think that's just a misdemeanor is trespassing. I'm not 100% sure. Um, again, I'm not fully caught up on what every law is. Uh, but still, I mean, you can take legal action against the people who trespassed, but I don't know why you're suing Nintendo, uh, Pokemon Company, all these, just, just because, like I said, it's the people who trespassed job not to trespass. So, I, and also, it, but I mean, you know, he's also talking about people were uh, walking around, you know, kind of hanging out in front of his house. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah, the people knocking on your door can be kind of annoying. But again, they're not, at least those people were knocking on your door. Uh, and the people out on the sidewalk, I say, well, that's, they're just on a sidewalk. That's public property. They can do whatever, you know, they can do whatever they want out there. Um, whether you find it annoying or not. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's kind of where I stand on that. It's, I, I think that's a stupid lawsuit just because I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's going to go anywhere just because again, like I said, it's, you're suing them because people broke the law playing their game. But again, the, it, the responsibility is on the people playing the game, not to break the law while playing the game. So that's, I guess my unofficial court ruling in this case. Uh, article by uh, Brian Crescente of Polygon. In other lawsuit news, uh, apparently the lawsuit against Take-Two Interactive has been dismissed. Uh, now this lawsuit, I remember talking about this a long, a long ways back. Um, I think actually sometime last year. Um, but this uh, article, or this, this lawsuit uh, was filed by uh, Solid Oak Sketches uh, Tattoo um, artist I, business. I, I'm not exactly sure how to classify it. Um, you know, they sued uh, Take-Two because um, NBA games were released with um, NBA players' tattoos that they did specifically for those NBA players. I'm saying NBA players just because I'm also not uh, full up on the NBA's roster. I don't watch the NBA. Either way, uh, I'm going to read a pass from the article, and I quote, Solid Oak Sketches sought damages of up to $150,000 per infringement. That means, in theory, the total payout for every tattoo and without uh, permission, or, I'm uh, sorry, the total payout for every tattoo used without permission could be somewhere in the billions of dollars, end quote. Uh, so that, that they, yeah, they were uh, set to probably make a lot of money. Um, and I understand their... Again, I, I understand why this is why this lawsuit came about because technically Take Two is making money off these games that are using your, I guess you'd call it intellectual property. Yet I be, I, I believe similar cases have been in the past that the once it, it's tattooed on the player, it's their property now. It's not so. I'm not 100 percent sure. Again, it, legally. I'm, well, I mean, illegally, I'm assuming because they dismissed the case, they don't have a case there. Uh, but again, I, I, I understand where they're coming from. But again, I have to side with Take Two just because they're using body art of the players, I believe, with player permission. Uh, so again, I don't think they need uh, the Tattoo Studios um, permission to do this again. Again, I, I, I side again. I side with the side with the company. You know, I side with. Video game companies. <laughs> Article by Wesley Copeland of IGN. Uh, those of you who are a fan of Powers, the um, PlayStation television series, yeah, I, that's really, again, it, that's so hard to classify. I, I, like, I think I saw season one. Uh, it's free for PlayStation Plus subscribers. You know, you can just watch it uh, on your PS4s. Um, go, okay, show. Um, you know, I thought it was a cool concept, really interesting show. Um, but, uh, Powers has been canceled and season two will conclude the series. Article by Alex Osborne of IGN. Um, and again, I, I, I don't know. Good show. I will say if you, um, go check it out if you haven't. Uh, Dragon Quest VIII Journey of the Cursed King is now free on the Amazon App Store for Android. According to, uh, the art, this is according to the article, uh, the game is also, um, Available to be purchased on uh, uh, on the Google Play Store and iTunes for nineteen ninety nine. So uh, if you have an Android, go to the Amazon App Store, get uh, Dragon Quest Eight for free. 
article by Allegra Frank of Polyon. Uh, August 16th, we'll be seeing uh, the new location in uh, IO. Or, yeah, I think it's IO, not EO. Where's EO? I can never remember. <laughs> of uh, the new Hitman game. So we'll uh, be able to travel to Bangkok. That's a really fun word to say. <laughs> uh, August 16th. Uh, check gameplay uh, of that on my channel. I, I will be playing it as I've played the past three locations. Let's see here. I'm sorry. I, man, I, this show feels off to me this week. Uh, Little King Story, which was uh, originally released on the Wii and is uh, actually also available on PS Vita, is now available on PC. Uh, it'll, it, 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 it is available on Steam, The Humble Store, and GOG.com. Uh, the game is currently 10% off uh, for the first week, um, so I believe in, in the game was released um, August 5th, so the sale will run, I believe, to uh, August 12th. Uh, the current price of the game is twenty two fifty, and this is American dollars um, for right now. And I assume after August twelfth, it will go back to twenty five dollars. Uh, article by Allegra Frank of Polygon. Koei Tecmo is apparently bringing. This is a long ass title. Nobunaga's ambition: Sphere of Influence Ascension to the West. <laughs> the article reads, uh, and I quote, leaving Japan on October 25th, end quote. I'm, I, I'm assuming that means it will be available in the West October 25th, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, again, it, it, that was, that's ambiguously, ambiguously worded. <laughs> um, game will be available uh, for PC and uh, PS4. Article by uh, Jordan DeVore of Destructoid. Jeez, a lot of, a few games have been uh been delayed. Uh, we have Outlast Two being delayed uh, to about quarter one of twenty seventeen, uh, according to a Facebook post by developer Red Barrels, uh, article by Jonathan Dornbush IGN, and uh, XCOM Two, uh, the console version of the game, is actually being uh, delayed to uh, September twenty seventh in North America and September thirtieth internationally. I believe the original release date for XCOM 2 on consoles was August uh, was September 6th. Um, the delay for XCOM is the same as the delay for for uh, Outlast 2. Uh, it's literally it's just to make sure the game's polished. It's up to you know it's it's up to the standard that the studios want, and uh, will then release to the public. Sweating. <laughs> uh, the console versions will feature, and I quote. Um, Improvements and new features that weren't present when the game launched on PC, end quote. Uh, that is from the article, and currently uh, no console mod support has been announced. Article by, by Matt Paget of GameSpot. Um, <clears throat> now, I'm assuming some of these new features are uh, some of the mods that were released by Longmore Studios. Um, you know, those were some of the first mods uh, done for XCOM 2 upon release. So I'm assuming that might be the new features, um, but I, again, I, I, I don't, I, I don't know for certain that it's all pure speculation. Um, also according to a, uh, article back, um, June 7th, uh, on IGN by Dan Stapleton, um, we have the idea of the pricing for these games. It will be, uh, $59.99, um, when it releases on console, uh, with a $20 season pass and, or you can purchase the $74.99 digital deluxe edition, which comes with the season pass. So I think. About yeah, okay. You're saving about five dollars. I don't know why that math was hard. <laughs> uh, Telltale, tell, Telltale has released a new patch to fix problems uh, for its new Batman series uh, on PC. Uh, apparently, there's an issue with frame rates and uh, just other basic just graphical errors um, on PC. Uh, I'm going to actually read you uh, a couple paragraphs from the article, just because I think it's they could explain it'll explain it a lot better than me trying to stumble through and explain it to you. Uh, and I quote: "The new patch automatically defaults the game to run on dedicated graphics cards and adds graphic settings to enable selection of higher performance textures or higher quality textures based on your hardware." Telltale also, advi also advises users to ensure their graphics drivers are up to date before running the game. End quote. Article by Matt Porter of IGN. 
Wow, we're almost at the end now. <laughs> uh, Fireforge has filed for bankruptcy. If you're wondering who the hell Fireforge is, they were the studio behind the new Ghostbusters game. You know, that was, I, I think it was connected to the movie. Um, needless to say, that game tanked. Uh, I haven't played it for myself, but everything I've read about it said it sucked. <laughs> uh, currently, their debt is at least $12 million. Um, apparently, uh, from what I was reading the, from of the article, a lot of that due um, is due to the, I believe they said Chinese distributor of League of Legends. Um, uh, this debt uh, is not just from the Ghostbusters game, but also um, they've been working on two MM, I think they said MOBA projects um, that were funded and just hadn't got hadn't gotten anywhere. So you know they're now uh, filing for bankruptcy. Uh, article by Thomas Beery of Polygon. Uh, Bethesda is currently having an open beta for its free-to-play card game, The Elder Scrolls Legends. Download through... You can download... Pff, words. You can download the beta through uh, Bethesda.net launcher. End quote. Uh, article by Surreal Vasquez, Game Informer. Jeez, I don't know. I, I'm sorry. I'm just flying through this week. I, this, I don't know, guys. I'm sorry. I'm I, I don't know. I haven't been sleeping well lately. It's probably just... Uh, I need some more rest. Um, final story we have, um, article by Chris Pereira of GameSpot. Uh, apparently Call of Duty Black Ops 3 is currently this generation's top selling game. Uh, this is from Activision's, you know, uh, last quarterly earnings report. Activision was, you know, kind of bragging, uh, citing, uh, NPD Group and, uh, GFK Chart Track. So I'm assuming this is pretty accurate. Um, which, uh, again, good for Activision. I'm, I mean, I find it surprising that... It's the highest selling game this generation, especially with all the other great stuff that's come out uh, this generation. Um, but good for them. Uh, I'm very excited for the upcoming Call of Duty game, uh, Infin In Infinite Warfare. Um, I don't know. I, I keep hearing a lot of people <clears throat> complaining about it, and I'm just like, I think it looks cool. So, uh, like I said, light news week this week. Uh, that's about all I have for you guys. Um, again, I'm sorry if my delivery was a little just off this week. It's, I don't know, like I said, I'm just not sleeping. Um, quick thing, uh, next week, the show will actually be up on, uh, Friday, just because I'll be out of town traveling, you know, I, I live in northern Indiana, I'll be traveling down to Indianapolis, uh, for a personal thing, uh, for a couple days, you know, so I'll be doing, like, a back and forth, two, three hour drive, uh, for a couple days, so uh, my content on the channel might be a little wonky, um, but, and just, uh, for ease, this show will be going up a day early. Um, so not Saturday, but Friday. Um, same time, noon Eastern, 9 and Pacific. Uh, other than that, um, I, yeah, I don't think there's anything else other than, uh, we, uh, we're starting this, tu this coming Tuesday, we're starting No Man's Sky. Um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm like, again, like, at lack of sleep, I'm trying to run through everything coming up. Um, again, uh, all my format, uh, you know, the, this show's format, um, again, my recording schedules, everything should kind of balance, it should kind of like level out, um, in the coming weeks, you know, I'll be traveling, um, and moving into my, uh, apartment, uh, down for school as I start this, uh, school year. So again, everything should, so if everything seemed a little kind of off and, uh, nebulous for the past while, that's why it's just because, you know, I'm getting ready to move and then it's, it's a big pain in the ass. Um, but, uh, guys, thank you for watching. Uh, as always, uh, Facebook, Twitter, my website down in the description below, like comment, subscribe, you know, go to the comments, all that, you know, stuff. Like I said earlier, uh, in the video, <clears throat> uh, in something, again, that this is something I've been doing for the past couple weeks. Uh, you know, I'm kind of saying what I'm playing this week, uh, you know, just for pleasure, not on the channel. Um, and I also ask you guys, go in the comments, you know, tell me what you're playing. Um, and I will say, I'm actually doing the same thing I've been doing last week. Uh, I'm still, I'm somewhere in the beginning, middle of um, Mass Effect 3. I don't know why, I just, I didn't play a lot last week, or this, you know, this past week. Um, but I plan on finishing that uh, in a couple days. I, and then playing um, Operation Darkness. Uh, if you don't know what it is, look it up. It's a really cool game. That just that nobody liked but me apparently, <laughs> uh, but guys, thank you for watching. Um, yeah, tune in next week. So uh, until then, guys, I'm AJ Gels. This is the Empire Gaming Channel. I'm out.